as the 2024 AFRW season is about to begin. It's time to celebrate what's going to be the best season to date. Last year, Brisbane won the big one against North Melbourne in a thrilling contest. But this year, the race is wide open. Will we see the Brisbane Lions go back to back? Or will we see a new team raise the cup at the end of the season? Will we see a side like the Saints go from out of the eight to winning the big one? Patrikios, Watson, Xenos, Wardlaw, Vesely and Smith will have something to say. Or will it be North Melbourne, a side filled with stars from experience? Two young guns, Garner, Birch, Ferguson, Gat, Tripodi, Eddie Martin and O'Shea. Or is it the Demons? Five experienced players go out, but young stars like Bassano, Witherspoon and Co. will have an impact. And of course, star trio, Hawes, Sanka and Mithen have something to say about this year's flag race after last year's disappointment. Can the young dogs rise up to the occasion? New coach, new players, new leaders. Sometimes change comes in a good way. Blackburn gets some support in the team via young stars Grig Butterfant and Christy Lee Turner. And new recruits ready to prove a point in Smith, Arends and McKee. Or can a team filled with young stars up by Adelaide who dominated this year's draft, bringing in Young, Goody, Window, Brook and Brooksby, surprise us all. Stars in this competition galore headlined, just to name a few, Conti, Garner, Marinoff, Garner, Too Good, the Prosparka sisters, Malloy, O'Driscoll, Patrikios and Dawes. We can't also forget the future of this competition. Loz Young, Charlie Rowbottom, Shanae Goody, Ella Roberts, Charlie Thomas, Brenna Terrence, Sophia Hurley, Alicia Pisano, Elaine Grigg, Ali Morfitt, Holly Cooper, Ali Dalloway, Ella Heads, Matilda Schultz, and of course, last year's rising star winner, Zali Goldsworthy. So many talented players ready to have insane seasons. I know I'm excited. Are you? Welcome to season 2024 of the AFLW. Let's go. Let's go! Hello everyone and welcome to the Scoops AFLW show. I'm your host Scoops, the sole admin of AFL information, trade rumours and results and wow what a low show I've got for you guys and girls today right here on the Scoops AFLW show. New camera angle. I'm testing out this. Uh, it's a bit annoying if I'm being brutally honest but we'll see how long I can do this for for this episode. Um, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the bell for all notifications. Um, a special like button for 30 likes for this video. Um, and if you know any AFL, AFLW players, any up-and-coming draftees or any state league players and you'd like to see them on my podcast in a Dolking Challenge and or interview, please do send me a message or try and get something sorted. If you haven't checked out any of my recent Scoops AFLW match day vlogs, including the one from yesterday, Western Bulldogs and St Kilda in Ballarat, please go and check that out if you haven't already. It's been up on the channel since this evening, a few hours before this episode airs or just after that. Um, I'm frustrated with a lot of things, and the Saints have stuffed it up again and will not be making finals in the AFW. Last year, we missed out on percentage, dropping a few games at the back end of the last season that we shouldn't have done. And this year, well, we've done it again. This time against the Bulldogs by a point. Now, the umpiring was a disgrace, and I'll get to that very shortly. So forgive me for being very frustrated right now, um, you know, and St Kilda will be featuring on Scoop Series Bang very shortly. Um, St Kilda is mathematically out of the finals race. It's down mathematically to 10 teams. The teams that are in the eight, including Essendon, then ninth and 10th, which is Melbourne and Geelong. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see who actually makes it. It'll probably be the teams that are in there right now have been brutally Honest with you all, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm going to go through my AFW fantasy score, my team of the week, my review and preview of the rounds just gone and upcoming. All righty. Please welcome. Oh, it's going to be world famous tonight. Please welcome the world famous segment, 
scoops goes bang all right so first of all the umpiring at Moorabbin sorry not at Moorabbin at Ballarat was an absolute disgrace that was single-handedly the worst umpiring of any AFW game this year. Well, actually, probably the Port game. We probably got a free ride against the Saints as well. Um, but this is definitely up there, and probably, for me, is a big one. Now, people will bring out the free kick count and say, oh, Scoops and Kilda got more frees. No, it doesn't say in the rule book that the free kick count has to be even, okay? And also, on top of that, um, there was a play in the game in the third quarter, I think it was, where Nat Axon was tackled or whatever without the ball in the third quarter, right in front of goal, and we didn't get a free. We lose by a point. There's one example there. Um, players get held, no free. Um, players dive on the ball without making a genuine attempt to get rid of it, no holding the ball, and then they get a goal from it. It's like, where's the consistency with the umpiring? Um, the umpiring in the AFL is bad. And the umpiring in a few games in the AFLW has been bad as well. Um, I do always say there's going to be games where umpires cross teams finals, and they've absolutely done it to the Saints here. They absolutely screwed the Saints over and robbed them right in front of me. But also on top of that, St Kilda didn't turn up in the second half at all. It's a repetitive cycle for St Kilda. I always say it because it's true. They rely on a fair few because they've got no depth at all. And to be f quite frank with you, there's players in that team on the weekend um, that don't deserve to be playing at all. I'm not going to name names, but you can connect the dots who I'm talking about. Um, there's the same players that try each and every week. It's Serene Watson. It's Jamie Lambert. It's T. Smith. And Ash Richards played well yesterday, but... I should be naming at least 15 names on page judging as well. Like, where's the leadership? Hannah Priest is the captain. Um, not only hasn't she performed great this year, where's the leadership? Like, I was in the Saints' back line the entire game yesterday. I could not hear her once communicating and everything like that. It was Watto. It was Paige Trudgeon doing that. Bianca Jacobson before she unfortunately hurt her knee. Like, Hannah Priest is the captain. Where is the leadership on the field and her on-field performance as well? Like, her form has been pretty poor the last few weeks. Um, you know, selection, integrity. Hasn't been there for most of the year from Nick Del Santo. Like, you know, there's been some players that haven't deserved a game and they've stayed in and then they've taken a while to take them out of the side. Like, then, you know, players that started the year off well, like Liv Vesely, who's a very good player, has been down since she came back in the side probably three or four games ago. Um, Jamie Lambert's had some big games this year, but also been quiet in some others. Um, the Rucks haven't won a game all year, pretty much. Let's just say this. Jesse Warlock can play in the Ruck. But when you've got three recognised Ruckman on a list and Jesse Warlaw is getting more percentage of time in the Ruck than the actual Ruck, probably shows you what St Kilda think of their own Ruck stocks, which goes back to what I said in the trade and draft period this year just gone. Why were you inactive? Back then I told you you needed to be active. You did nothing. You brought in two players through the draft and... You brought in one player, sorry, two players through the trade period, and there were only depth options. And Paige Trudgeon, to her credit, has been pretty good with Watto down in the back line. But you didn't recruit anyone of big name value. You did absolutely nothing in the draft. And our first selection was Kiara Wiley, who's only played a few games at the back end of this year. Rounds the GWS game and the game after that, Emma Rabin. And that was it. Or three games, sorry. And that was it. So, yes, Patrikios has been out the whole season, which doesn't help our best player. But 
outside of Georgia, we've had a bunch of injuries, but we can't use that as excuses for the whole season. Blame the list of management for not managing their plays well. Like Steph Ciocci has been out all season with her knee injury, and she was probably never going to play. So you could have put her on the inactive list and, you know, actually recruited more players. But you didn't do that. Same with a few other players. Patrikios was the same before the season started. Could have put her on the inactive list, but you didn't. There was a few others as well. For Tommy, I can't remember the Tommy, but there was a few others in the same boat. Um, and you didn't do that either. There's about five players that were out for the year, for most of the year, if not all the year. You could have put them on the inactive list and got a re replacement player, but you didn't. Like, list management needs to be held accountable for what they've done. I told you before the season started that they needed to recruit well, and they didn't. Paige Trojan is the only one of the recruits, or draftees for that matter, can hold her head up high. But in saying that, some players haven't been given opportunity as well. Um, what has St Kilda done when Jesse Wall has been triple teamed, tag teamed, and everything like that? It's the same problem that St Kilda do with Max King in the AFL side. I'm not blaming Jesse. I'm not blaming Max. I'm blaming the delivery. It's just hack kicking the ball into the 50. It's just, oh, yeah, let's see what happens. Jesse will get it done. Max King will get it done. And then the media is all on them. I thought Jesse held her own this year for the most part of the year. It's not her fault when the delivery is pretty poor. And that's another reason why we're not playing finals because you can't get into finals continuously by continuously just hacking the ball into the 50 and just hoping it works. Like, you need to recruit elite ball users. Just like in the AFL side, there's not many of them going around the Saints AFL side. Seems to be a trend here. The recruiting needs to change. They need to be bold. They need to be aggressive. I mean, when the season's well and truly officially over, I will probably tell you who they should take out and who they should target. I actually said who they should target only a few weeks ago. They should be throwing godfather offers at Alla Roberts and Zali Goldsworthy. They are game changers. They are the future of this competition. Try and get them now before they're worth even more than they're on now. I think they're the two best young players in the comp and two of the best players in the game. You try and get someone like a Mon Conti or an Ashradell, um, you know, it's not going to hurt to ask. You're probably going to get told no, thanks, but try. If you want to get someone that, you know, is going under the radar, Melbourne let go someone who is an All-Australian contender this year in Eliza West. Westy has been killing it for Hawthorne. Um, and I said at the time also that Melbourne will rue the day they dropped Eliza West from a final after getting 18 disposals the week prior. Now, that's on Melbourne. And I said they'll come out to bite them in the arse, and it has, because Eliza West is going to be playing finals, and Melbourne probably are not. And if they do, they're only scraping in just. Due to St Kilda choking against the Bulldogs and other teams. And same for West Coast, also choking against... Geelong and Freo in the last few weeks. And then you can say the same for Essendon. If they don't make it in Melbourne, make it. It's only because Essendon have been choking as well. So it's just like going back to St Kilda here. Like, where is the improvement coming from? You're not drafting anyone, you're not bringing anyone in the trade period. What you've got's not worked for years. It's been like the men's team. They just hang around the eight. They start so well, they get all your hopes up, and then they shit it down and not make the finals. It's frustrating. They need to recruit better. Del Sano and co, if you want some help, you know where to find me. Give me a buzz. It's frustrating. It really, really is frustrating being a Saints fan in both competitions. Um, because they let you down as well. Now, Scooter's Bang doesn't stop with the Saints. Fan engagement. It is run by the A4W competition that there is a fan engagement, win, lose, or draw, no matter their conditions, unless it's lightning or something, then I understand that. 
But outside of that, fan engagement is fan engagement. With fans, after the game, for 10 to 15 minutes at least, or thereabouts, around the 10 to 15 minute mark, every club, no matter your whether you won, lost, or drawn the game, you go out. Now, I've singled out a few clubs like Carlton and a few others that have done it in the past. And I mentioned that staff worker at Carlton that ripped into the few players that, you know, tried to ignore them. Um, and they went back and did what they had to do. Because, you know, it's the right thing to do. Fans turn up in all weather conditions. I've been at plenty of neutral games. I've been over 30 games now this year. And not all of them have been St Kilda, clearly, because there hasn't been 30 individual St Kilda games this year. I've been to probably 24, 25 neutral games and the other four or five are St Kilda. Um, so St Kilda are in the firing line again. Okay. So first of all, St Kilda did not, not one player stayed out after the game. Now, I'm not fully blaming the players here. I'm blaming the football club department that is responsible for telling them to go out. They know, I'm sure they're smart enough to connect the dots and know win, loss, or draw, that there's a fan engagement regardless of the result. The rope wasn't even put out yesterday for St Kilda, and they had a bunch of people there. And not one stopped, which is pretty bad. And I'm not blaming the players here, fully at least. I'm blaming the club for 99% of this. Now, look, you advertise something, you do it. And before people say, oh, well, Scoops, they had a tough one-point loss, they've just missed out on finals, give them a break. No, 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 no. You don't advertise something, then don't deliver. And regardless of the fact, let's let's have you have that one, right? Okay. Um, I've been to all the St Kilda Victorian games this year, bar the Giants one for personal reasons and the one when I was in Perth against Hawthorne. Outside of that, um, I've been to every other Saints game in Victoria. And there's been games they've won and lost. They have not stopped as a team or any at all. Now, you can kind of tell through my player photos that I post who stays the St Kilda? It's obviously Serene Watson is one. Watto, um, great person, great player, um, good person, as I said, great person. Uh, Charlotte Simpson, I've seen out there a few, fair few times. Before Georgia Patrikios was injured, she would always do it last year, another good person. Um, and then randomly another player here and there, one or two appearances. Like, that's not good enough. It's not. And regardless, the club should be saying to them, no, your fans, like the Carlton staff members said to those Carlton players, your fans turn up no matter the weather, no matter where you win, lose, or draw. They're here for you. How about for five minutes, five, 10, 15 minutes max, you go out there and say thank you. But I know when the rope doesn't go out, that's the club that said no to going out. That's on the club. And I will blame them. They've got a big track record track record of lying. They falsely advertise in the men's season for open trainings, okay? And I've got the stats to back this up. I mean, I've said this in the past when it's happened, so I'm not lying. And it's my own team, so why would I lie? And I wouldn't lie in general, so there you go. There was open trainings in the men's competitions last year in December where they said they would go out, um, like, you know, Post training, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, um, what do you call it? A oh, yeah, meet and greet, photos, the signatures, right? And then that doesn't happen. You can't falsely advertise something and then say, no, you cannot use that as a way to get people to the training sessions. And I know the ones they've done it in December and uh, February, I think it was, the other one, where they've said the same thing. Yep, players will be after the training, blah, blah, blah. Have a photo, have a chat, have some signatures, whatever you want to do that you normally do in that time frame. And both times it didn't happen. And they copped a big roasting from a lot of fans that were very frustrated in person and online. 
they have really got to fix up that social interaction people that you know run all that and the people that are making these decisions to falsely advertise that and they're not delivering on it they really need to think about their fans a lot more clearly i don't see brisbane are a prime example okay and this is further proof why brisbane are successful on and off the field in the men's and women's competitions perfect example right okay brisbane are a strong team prime example of why st kilda need to lift their game here and the club the clubs that do it okay okay it's plain and simple all right so for example right brisbane played geelong okay in geelong so an away game an interstate game for the brisbane lions they got beaten badly if we're being honest against geelong in geelong only a few weeks ago and an away game too and all the brisbane players stayed out there they engaged with their fans all of them they were smiling they were chatting having fun with their fans having a chat having a laugh taking photos taking signatures filming videos whatever it may be and they stayed out there for a good 15 minutes and i would know because i was there and i was speaking to a half of them you know that is a prime example of what st kilda should be doing so if i ever hear oh they lost or blah 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 no the brisbane lions have set the standards and so have other clubs like the eagles and others they lost it was an interstate game interstate game they all still stayed out for 10 to 15 minutes at least so every other club should see that and go okay brisbane lost they got embarrassed they're an interstate team in geelong they stayed out and not like a couple of them the whole damn crew were there even the emergencies and other players that were there that were injured or whatever were there and a part of the fan engagement area so kill the football club the people that are running the show there need to lift their game it's pathetic it's embarrassing it's disrespectful disrespectful to your fans and quite honestly it is a joke and i'm not the only one saying it i spoke to plenty of others at the ballarat game and in previous games and they've said the same damn thing they need to lift their game and this is part of the reason why they don't have a big ton of members in the afl scene as well i can go to a collingwood training session for the men's or women's and people are there and they engage with their fans carlton the same like i did on the weekend because they clearly care st kilda need to improve that dramatically and all the on field and off field things that i just mentioned about list management etc as well lift your game it's bad it's embarrassing hope you guys and girls enjoyed that edition of the world famous segment scoop shows bang now i'm going to go through my um afw fantasy score before i do forget as i've forgotten a few weeks in a row or a few times this year so i do apologize for that heading into the last round i have scored 1347 my ranking is 2722 um i will announce on next week's show the winner of the scoops fantasy league team there is no prize but they'll get a shout out um but yeah so congratulations to the people that are in finals and everything like that good luck to you all and hopefully you can win i know the person who will be watching this video who i'll be facing in my grand final i'm not going to say all the best um i could say good luck because you'll need it um but yeah here we go the race is on my friend and that person knows who they are um i have done three trades but again i'm not revealing them because people will copy me especially the person that i'm in the grand final with and facing against is this person's already bringing in the excuses as to a few injuries well newsflash i've had a few players get injured on the weekend including daisy darcy who's potentially done a race here so if that's the case we wish daisy darcy all the best unfortunately steph wales from the bombers their ruck is unfortunate under ACL, so we wish her all the best. And Bianca Jacobs from the Saints potentially, potentially, is on an ACL. She'll have scans today or tomorrow. And we hope that uh, BJ does not have an ACL injury. 
wish her all the best as well and to everyone else that's suffered injuries throughout the week. Um, we hope it all goes well. All right. Now, all righty. Now, it is time to go through my Scoops APLW Round 9 team of the week. <clears throat> From the back line, the pockets. Well, not the pockets. From the back line, Emma O'Driscoll and Beth Schilling. Half back line, the flank is Neve McLaughlin and Molly Brooksby. Centre half back, Serene Watto Watson, breaking records, a seventh appearance in nine rounds, Watto star. Winners, Jazz Fleming and Eliza McNamara. Centre woman, Ashling McCarthy. Half forward line, the flank is Jazz Garner and Taylor Smith. Centre half forward, Ashling Maloney. Forward line, Bonnie, too good, and Kate Sheilor. Ruck, Sarah Lackey. Rovers, Ella Roberts and Elise Parker. Interchange, Baldors, Ebony Marinoff, Danielle Ponta, Ailey Sheeran, Ailey Sheeran, and Georgia Nanskorn. Emergencies, Michaela Can, Keely Shear, and Alexandra Morkham. Now, Reasons for these selections. Look, um, a strong, strong team this week. Um, you know, not as many players to choose from in terms of, like, depth options or players to go in the mix. So you just got the three emergencies this week. Um, Keely Shear and Michaela Can were the next midfielders and Morecambe was the next defender. But the back line was very easy for me. Those six that I've got there on the field were absolute locks. Um, Emma O'Driscoll played a part in the Dockers win, um, had around 20 disposals. Beth Schilling, um, she got moved on to Ashling Maloney, who kicked six goals in an impressive performance. But Maloney making two goals on Beth Schilling in the second half. But if you watched the game properly like I did, she was an absolute machine. Intercept marks, contested marks. She played really, really well and potentially could be getting three votes. Uh, Neve McLaughlin had over 20 disposals to run and carry off halfback for the Suns. She was really good. Watto, 21 disposals, eight intercept possessions, seven rebound 50s, four marks, five tackles. Watto is a star and will be a lock for an all Australian spot. I'm telling you that right now when I announce it on the Scoops AFW Mental Show next week. Um, Molly Brooksby had around 20 disposals, really good off halfback as she's been in her debut season. Uh, Jazz Fleming. A goal over 20 possessions. Same with Eliza McNamara. They were locks. Ashling McCarthy. Ashling McCarthy, sorry. Uh, three goals. Over 25 disposals was a lock. Jazz Garner, two goals and 27 disposals was a lock. Ashling Maloney, six goals. Like 18 disposals, like 10 marks was a lock. Taylor Smith kicked at three. Body too good. Had about 18 disposals, about eight of those contested. About six score involvements. Kicked two goals was a lock. And in that draw for the Bombers over the Tigers. With the Tigers. Sarah Lackey was the best ruckman for the round. She dominated uh, her opponent, Kate Darby. Ella Roberts, over 32 disposals. Again, a goal. She's a star. Um, if if this season hasn't proven to you all that Ella Roberts is not only a star of the future, but of the now, Ella Roberts is that good. Um, um, and... I mean, if you don't think so, then I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Elise Parker's had a really underrated season. Uh, 32 disposals. The team may have been crap this year, but she's been very, very good. Bell Dawes, two goals, 22 disposals. are very good in the big win for the Lions over the Swans. Ebony Marinoff, 26 disposals, like 16 tackles. Her efficiency wasn't the best, but, you know, those numbers are hard to ignore. Danielle Ponte, three goals, two of those in a row, an important win for the Crows. Ailey Sheeran, uh, the Tigers may have had a draw. She kicked a goal, had about 23 disposals, like 16 of those contestants, high efficiency in Darwin, so she was a lock. And Georgia Nanscorn for the Bombers, again, in the same conditions, in the long sleeves, about 27 disposals, most of those contestants, uh, high efficiency, like Ailey Sheeran, and deserves a spot on the side. And I mentioned about Michaela Can, a goal in 21, Kelly Shear, a goal in 22, and Morecambe about 20-odd disposals as a backman as well. So that's my team of the week. Let me know down below what you think. Um, yeah. Now let's go through the ladder, shall we? So 
let's get it up okay so let's get rid of that banner for a second collingwood will be the likely wooden spooners potentially gold because of gds technically swans mathematically but that can't happen realistically unless the pies win by like 110 points and sydney lose by like that uh the bulldogs jump up a little bit uh equal with the saints and eagles and the bulldogs and carlton um to be honest i wouldn't care if St Kilda lost because they'll get a better draft pick especially if west coast bulldogs or carlton or all three win so you know i'm fine with that to be honest um richmond have secured a finals berth with that draw over essendon Adelaide have confirmed a finals appearance they cannot fall out um realistically and in fact they won't because they've got 50 percent ahead of melbourne uh essendon simple they beat carlton they stay in they lose and then if melbourne beat collingwood which should happen melbourne arena and essendon are out but geelong to make it geelong need to beat adelaide which i doubt that very much but it's in geelong so you never know and they actually could win that Adelaide have been a bit scratchy in a few games this season lately. Um, so Geelong would have to beat Adelaide in Geelong, Melbourne will lose to Collingwood, and Essendon will lose to Carlton, which I don't see all three of those results going like that. So Geelong, Melbourne are the only teams that are out of the eight right now that can make it. Adelaide are safe, which means it's Essendon versus Melbourne versus Geelong. In reality, who do you think makes it? I generally think that Carlton could beat Essendon and they've got a big rivalry. Um, speaking to some of those Carlton um, players on Saturday, they're up and about for the Pies game and they'll be on a high after that win, I'm sure, and they want to bounce back. So just quietly, I hope. Uh, the Blues give the Bombers a beating and Melbourne fall in to the eight. But we'll have to wait and see there. All right, let's go review. Those round nine games, shall we? All right. So, uh, yeah, let's review those round nine games. I'll just put that banner back up while I um, review the round nine games. So, uh, 23 to 17. 23 to 17. 23 to 17. Hawthorne over Melbourne. Melbourne had their chances late. Uh, Lily Mithin has shot at the goal and missed, but there was still opportune time for the Bees to get the job done. They couldn't get it done. Um, but, you know, I went for Hawthorne that secured a top four spot and top two spot. And Melbourne, they're potentially not making it now, but there's still a chance. If Carlton can beat Essendon and they beat Collingwood, which they should, they'll play finals. So <laughs> it's all said and done. They can get it done if they really, really apply themselves. Uh, Adelaide 33, North Melbourne 41. Jess Garner was good. O'Loughlin, um, well, for most parts. Shearlaw was really good as why well. she's in my team of the week. Garner and Riddell was really good as well. Um, Me King applied some tackling pressure. Uh, Ricky Wall was a brick wall. If you know the reference there. Um, she was very good for the Roos as well. May not, have not, may not have had high disposal numbers. Disposal numbers. They're very impactful with their strength and contested possessions and just getting through plays, kicking goals as well. Vicky Wall been a good addition after having the year off the year prior. But great win for the Roos. They were really in control for most of this. The Crows came late, but the Roos held on. They did have a 20-point lead at one point. GWS 25, Freo 55. Freo by 30 points. Well, they were pretty much always winning this, and, well, they did. So there's that. Um, but here we are. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Rotation, eh? The next game to go through is none other than Gold Coast 24, Adelaide 98. Sorry, 58. 34 point victory for the power. Um, you know, they got what they had to do. Joe Miller was a debutant for this game she kicked two goals with like 14 disposal i'm sure she'll stay in this week now because of that great win for the power the sun's disappointing again charlie robot was really good as i said earlier daisy darcy was on 12 disposals in the second quarter before she's potentially unfortunately done her acl so we wish her all the best um oh for the hawks michaela williamson is the round nine rising star nominee so well done to mickey for um being 
uh, the Rising Star nominee for round nine, Michaela Williamson. Well done, Michaela, or Mickey as she is known. Uh, all right, so let's now go to let's go to the next game, shall we? All right, so let's go to the next game. So we have none other than Geelong and West Coast, 23 to 56. Um, Eagles had the chances early. Ella Roberts was really good. I thought Belle Lewis was pretty good despite her numbers. Um, I thought she was a lot better than what it's shown. Um, but, yeah, so... Disappointing for them. Their final chances are now mathematically over. I really rated this season, the Eagles. They've, you know, done really well for the most part of it. They've been smashing against Brisbane. They're embarrassing against Hawthorne. But outside of that, they've done really well, to be honest, especially where they came from. But how do some players get the game of the Eagles? I just don't know. I mean, this is nothing against some of these players. But, you know, Georgie Cleaver was a top draft pick, and I'm sure she'll be great for the future. But it's just like, I feel like, you know, she's been playing netball and everything like that. Maybe it's not having a full preseason of AFLW hasn't helped her, maybe. I don't know. You'd have to ask her that. But um, in juggling all those sports, credit to her for the commitment. I love the dedication and commitment of that. But she's played some games, you know, where you go, okay, that's happened once. It's happened twice. It's happened three times. Just seems to be very fumbly with the ball, I feel, a little bit. Um, and I'm sure she knows that, but um, it's not having a go or anything like that. I just feel like, you know, just because you're rated so highly in the draft and you can't be handed games. And to be honest, I'm sure she would be one to say that she hasn't killed it this season. I mean, you don't have to kill it, but you have to be reasonable to keep a spot on the side. And I feel like she'll admit that. She'll be one of the first, I'm sure, to admit that. Very dedicated to her sports, as I've just said. So, um, yeah. It's just, you know, be fumbly all the time. It looks like under pressure a lot. Just gets rid of the ball without looking and things like that and turns it over a little bit. But I'm sure she'll improve from that, Georgie Cleaver. I'm sure she will. Maybe this mention here might get her to perform this week if she's selected. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully she does well. Um, the next thing I'm going to go through is Essendon and Richmond, 42 apiece in Darwin. Bonnie Tugel is really good. Sarah Hosking. Oh, another thing St Kilda should learn from. Sarah Hosking tore her hamstring the last two minutes of the game, and she was the first player and stayed the whole damn time of the fan engagement. Another note, St Kilda, to keep an eye on. Okay? That's another example. Hosko, good person, did what she did for the fans. And she was actually injured, and she still did that. St Kilda, take notes. Go give Hosko a call. I'll go give the Brisbane Lion girls a call and see how it's meant to be done. If you're not going to listen to me, go listen to them. Like, seriously. Um, but, yeah, a draw was a great game in Darwin. The conditions were very hot. 31, I think, the game temperature was. Um, the game temperature. And then humidity made it like 36. Apparently, AB Holmes was saying on the coverage. So, you know, it's tough conditions. Decent scoring game, and they did really well, both teams. Um, Essendon had their moments where they thought they should win it, then Richmond should have as well. Then Essendon got away to a few goals up, then Richmond came back. Mon Conti kicked a good goal on the boundary line. Um, Nance Gorn played a role. Ailey Sheeran played a role for Richmond. Uh, Morecambe played a part. Um, you know, Katie Brennan played a part for the Tigers up forward, especially early. Um, so overall, a really good game, a good contest. Uh, I was hoping Richard could win to keep St Kilda's chances alive, but now that St Kilda lost, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. But we gave Melbourne and Geelong a better chance and potentially West Coast as well. Actually, it definitely would have given West Coast a chance to some degree. All right. Well, mathematically, yes. Realistically, probably not. Percentage-wise, probably about 25% behind that it would have been still before the round started. Anyway, the next game we're going to go through is the Sunday game, St Kilda 40, 35 Bulldogs 36. One point in Ballarat. I mentioned this earlier. It's not good enough. St. Kilda started really well. They got a goal on the verge of halftime, literally, from that Exxon. And then Ash Richards to start the third quarter. And then that second half, they didn't even turn up. 
They got beaten through the midfield, got beaten in the ruck most of the time, not all the game. Warlaw did do really well in the first half in the ruck. Then Warlaw was more up forward in the second half for the most part. Uh, but, yeah, so it's just frustrating. T. Smith wasn't her best. Um, there was only really a few that can hold their head up high. Same names, Watto, Trudgeon, um, and, yeah. Molly McDonald probably as well and Ash Richards. So Nat Plain played a role in terms of trying to – she was really good last week. Wasn't it as good this week, but still applied that pressure. And you got to at least do that. So Nat Plain did that a little bit in this game. But definitely was nowhere near the worst on the ground for Saints at all. Uh, very disappointing. Files are over, and they've got no one to blame for themselves. And the dodgy umpire, of course, in this game that favoured the Bulldogs heavily for most parts. So could to get a few frees that were interesting – or non-calls, but that's what I'll say about the umpiring. Collingwood and Carlton, what a great game this was. 28-32 in favour of the Blues. Um, <laughs> yeah, great win for the Blues. Um, confidence booster for them. They've been torn to shreds in the media this year, and rightfully so. They've been poor for pretty much every game by the ones they won. They beat Geelong, and I was saying to some of the girls on the sad days, like, you know, you beat Geelong, and they're the best side that's not been in the eight all year easily. You beat Geelong easily. You kept them goalless. And we're talking about that to some of the players. And then I know Collingwood on the other side of the ladder to Geelong, pretty much, but in terms of who's been better. But Collingwood have had injuries. I said, this is your chance. This is your moment to take it. Tani Brown against her old side. Did her part. Meg Robinson played really well. Killy Shear was really great. Um, you know, overall, they were just really good, the Blues. And um, did their role. Uh, Amelia Valadaro, she did really well as well. Kicked a goal. Hasn't been in the side for most of this year. Came in the side a few weeks ago. Um, it was a late change, I think, off the top of my head. And get to go yesterday. It was great for her confidence as well. To hopefully stay in for the last game and in future years as well for her. Amelia. So, yeah, great win for Carlton and Collingwood. Oh, so close. That Carlton just got it late. Dana Finn kicked the last goal of the game, which put the Blues back in front. After they had the lead that they shouldn't have lost. So credit to Collingwood for sticking through. At their home ground, um, but the Blues got it done just very late. And the final game, Brisbane 78, Sydney 10. I mean, Cynthia Hamilton played a part. Laura Garner on return played a part. But not many soldiers really stood out for the Swans, for the Brisbane Lions. It was Bell Dawes. It was Ola Ojawire. Uh, it was Sophie Conway, Jade Allinger. The same names that kill it each and every week. Taylor Smith played really well. Bree Conan down in the back line. So, uh, great win for the Brisbane Lions, and they are third on the ladder, as you would have seen earlier on the screen. If not, I'll, I want to put that back up just in case you didn't actually see it, but you could have paused it and rewinded it. But anyway, uh, there's a ladder there. So, yeah, top four, uh, down to Adelaide and Frio, realistically, for that last spot. In the top four, technically, Richmond can get it as well. But I think it'll probably stay as is as Adelaide should be too long. And speaking of that, let's go review. The last games of the home and away season. The last games of the home and away season. Let's go. All right. So we got Geelong and we have Adelaide at GMHBA Friday night. Um, I'll be tipping Adelaide in this one by 10 points. That game is 7.15 Victorian time at GMHBA. It's Friday night at Geelong and Adelaide. Saturday, 1.05 p.m. at Icon Park. It's Melbourne hosting Collingwood. I'll be tipping Melbourne in this one by 27 points. Uh, Sydney v West Coast at Henson Park on Saturday. I'll be tipping West Coast in this one by 12 points. Next game, 5.05 p.m. at Arden Street. North Melbourne hosting Gold Coast, Victorian time at 5.05. North Melbourne wins one by 45 points. Carlton v Essendon, 7.15 Victorian time at Icon Park Saturday night. This game will shape the eight, especially if Collingwood have won. If that happens, if Collingwood beat Melbourne, sorry, if Melbourne beat Collingwood, sorry. If Melbourne beat Collingwood, they will temporarily be in the eight. Then they would need Carlton to do it, and they make finals. If Essendon win, then Essendon play finals. So they'll have to wait and see there. I'll be tipping Carlton in an upset by one point here. I just got faith in the Blues girls this week to back it up. Don't let me down. Sunday, 1.05 p.m. at Moorabbin. It's the Saints and Brisbane, 1.05 for joint time. I'll be tipping Brisbane in this one by 38 points. Uh, Richmond and Hawthorne, 3.05 p.m. at Punt Road Oval. I'll be tipping Richmond in this one by 11 points. Make that 13 points. Make that 15 points. Make that 17 points. Why not? Uh, 5 at 5 p.m. 
at Alberton Oval in Adelaide, 5.05 p.m. Victorian time on Sunday. It's Port Adelaide hosting the Giants. I'll be tipping Port Adelaide in this one by 16 points. And the final game, 7.05 p.m. in Perth at Fremantle Oval, 7.05 p.m. Victorian time, 4.05 p.m. Victorian time, sorry, 7.05 p.m. Vic time, 4.05 p.m. Perth time. It's Freo hosting the Western Bulldogs. I'll be tipping Freo in this one by 17 points. Now, my final thoughts are simply this. If you know any AFL, AFLW players, any up-and-coming draftees or any state league players, and you would like to see them on my podcast in a Golden Challenge and or interview, please do send me a message to try and get something sorted. The Scoops AFLW medal will be on next week, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Same with the AFLW show. It will be on those three days. I'll finalize that and make a post and let you all know on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you all. And also, if you want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Want me to roast a friend or something happy birthday, anything at all, cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Thank you all for watching this. Till the next video, take care. And come on, Saints, lift your game. Come on, beat the Lions.